Batgirl and the Vial of Veracity, written by Bobo the Hobo. Find him on DeviantArt.com for more stories, and visit Patreon.com slash Bobo the Hobo. Pledge at a certain tier to join the exclusive Discord channel, chat with other weight gain story fans, and even Bobo the Hobo himself. Criminals are a superstitious and cowardly lot. They plan and plot, but they always get caught. Great minds like Kirk Langstrom's went to waste whenever they threw their hats into the ring of those who would subvert justice and bend Gotham City to its knees through insidious means. This was a man who had mastered genetics in multiple species, his morals and ethics clouded and corrupted into criminality by way of bioterrorism, who until his arrest had been taking refuge in one of the many abandoned buildings in the industrial district. For people like Barbara Gordon, better known to cape chasers out there as Batgirl, it was something of a guilty pleasure in taking him down. It was something of a guilty pleasure in taking him down. After all, this is literally what she trained for. Taking down guys with superpowers was literally in her job description. Do we really count Manbat as someone with superpowers, though? Why wouldn't we count Manbat as superpowered? She and Nightwing on again, off again, lover boy, and Wayne Ward. Dick Grayson had been staking out this hideout for about two weeks now. You would have thought, given the conspicuous nature of a man-sized bat monster flapping in and out of belfries as he pleased, it would have been much easier for them to get the drop on Langstrom back when he was the imminent threat. But he was as sneaky as he was brilliant, and though they were both master criminologists in training, they had both been wrong before. Besides, sitting on top of the steel mill was a great way to work on their respective witty banter. Someone in the bat family had to keep up the conversation, and it certainly wasn't going to be Bruce because his powers come from a lab. Nightwing's brow furrowed beneath his domino mask. And they're temporary. It's more like a transformation than a superpower. Okay, so you go talk to Orca and tell me that she doesn't count in our superpowered scorecard. She doesn't seem like the kind of person who would take that conversation well. Then Manbat counts as a superpowered criminal. Barbara stuck out her tongue, which means I'm up by three points. Barbara had been the one to take down Manbat last week delivering the kick that had knocked him unconscious and reverted him back to his more easily manageable Kirk Langstrom persona, and had netted her five points in their tally card system for taking down baddies. What they were tracking now was the remaining members of the group that Dr. Langstrom had allied himself with in hopes of furthering his agenda. And maybe a few extra points to see who would wind up paying for pizza this Friday. Yeah, yeah, whatever, there's motion in the warehouse, Dick said with a roll of his eyes. Switch to detective mode. Ugh, that was such a stupid thing to call the different modes built into their lenses. Luke could really name these things, couldn't he? All right, we've got movement on the top floor. Nightwing said as the X-ray vision of a single shambling skeleton came into view. We move on my count. Batgirl and Nightwing got into position. Their grapples ready. They aimed at the structurally strongest parts of the building so as to ensure that their weight would hold. Their frequent pizza dates weren't enough to throw off the carefully configured geometry, that both of them had learned to do in their heads by merit of being trained by Batman himself. Though admittedly, Bab's suit was fitting a bit tighter than she liked to admit. Sure you can handle this? Nightwing stuck out his tongue from higher up along the building's landscape. You're moving a little slow tonight. Quiet, Dick. Somehow I don't think that started with a capital letter. The two vigilantes mounted the wall of the abandoned warehouse. Despite the fact that there was only one of Langstrom's crewmen entering the warehouse at this time of night, he was making an awful lot of noise. So much so that the Bat Brats were being overly cautious with masking their presence. The sound of beakers breaking and loud thumps against the wall made them almost apprehensive of going inside. Heavy breathing and pained. What sounded like growls were bouncing off of the walls. So loud that even those outside of the windows could hear them. Sounds like he's having a bad night. Let's go make it a worse one. Mounting their respective windowsills, the Nightwing and Batgirl steadied themselves for both observation and confrontation of the perceived threat. DM scans revealed that whomever was inside, his heart rates were spiking. Hang back, BG, Nightwing said with an outstretched palm. I'll run recon. And let you get a leg up on our tally card? Barbara scoffed. No way! The two of them crept on their lightest feet towards the sound of their B&E. It wasn't hard for them to sneak up on him, given the state that he was in. DM Reddings said that his adrenaline rates were spiking through the roof. With every moment that passed, he seemed to be getting angrier and more unhinged. What's more, there were certain troubling protrusions coming from his shoulder blades. We've got a potential man bat too. Nightwing said into their shared comms, repeat man bat too. Just five more points to add to my total. Batgirl sprung from the corner that she'd been covering just in time to catch the man becoming bat off guard. He whipped around. 
his face still contorting to the bat-like structure that his overdose of Langstrom's serum was reconfiguring him into. The flash of lightning hadn't been particularly helpful as it was dramatic, enough to make the otherwise seasoned crime fighter hesitate. Get down! The not-quite-man-bat took a flying leap towards Batgirl, guided by his still-budding animal instincts as a means of protecting himself. In her slight moment of hesitation, she was knocked backwards into a table headfirst and could only vaguely recollect the moments that followed afterwards. Dick diving out a window, newly formed wings failing to take flight. The distinct smell of copper as everything around her, even the lightning began to fade to black. Barbara awoke sometime later in the medical wing of the Gotham City Hospital. It was the first time, and it certainly wouldn't be the last time that she'd do so during her stint as a crime fighter in Gotham City. After all doing what she did without superpowers, there was only so many times you could wake up surprised in a hospital bed. The thing that had shaken her awake, finally, was not the ambient sounds of her hospital room. Rather, it was the familiar smell of greasy Gotham's best pizza from the corner of Lincoln and March. She and Dick had been eating there so frequently, she could vaguely remember her mind placing her at the scene of the pizzeria, him in one side of the booth, her in the other, downing slice after slice of greasy, cheesy goodness. Oh, hey, you're awake. Barbara blinked herself awake for the second time that day, as Dick Grayson in his civilian clothes slowly came into view. Unblurring as the sleep roused from her eyes, his warm blue eyes were the first thing that Barbara really saw as she shook off the post-trauma-induced coma. I was starting to worry about you there, Babs. Barbara couldn't exactly place what she was feeling, but it wasn't romantic paramour feelings for Dick Grayson, those she knew very well. She'd been dealing with them since around the time that puberty struck, and whenever he happened to be in town on a mission away from Bloodhaven. No, this was something different, something that she couldn't quite place. Is that pizza? The words left her mouth sooner than she could really process them. But the overpowering aroma of cheese and grease from Gotham's finest pizzeria was really too good to pass up. She felt her nose twitch in the presence of Dick's custom order pepperoni with pineapple. And though she'd given him plenty of shit in the past over his choice of toppings, she couldn't help but feel that a couple of slices of za would really hit the spot right about now. She found herself leaning forward without any real reason as to why, only realizing that she'd grabbed a slice of the runny triangle by the time she was sitting up. You know what? I'm going to look the other way on that one, Dick said with a small laugh, and I'm going to chalk it up to you finally admitting that pineapple does belong on pizza. No response from Batgirl as she lowered the stray strand of cheese dangling down from her pilfered piece into her awaiting mouth. Her green eyes were wider than they had any right to be after two days of head trauma-induced sleep. The flavors danced across her taste buds as she took another bite of Dick's pizza and then another. Pretty soon she was reaching for another slice. I mean, I guess that I shouldn't be surprised, considering that you've been in a coma for like three days now. Dick scrunched his pretty face disapprovingly. But are you sure that you're okay? What? Babs smacked her lips. I'm feeling great. Did we get the guy? Yeah, we got the guy, Dick sighed. But it turns out that Langstrom has been loaning out his man-bat formula to his lab hands so they can cause trouble in Greater Gotham, but the main lab is located in Bloodhaven. I'm gonna head back in a few to make sure that everything's on the up and up back home. Babs had managed to down her two slices of pizza in no time flat and was now reaching for a third. Are you sure that you're okay? Dick grimaced. You haven't even done the whole, wah, where am I thing? The what? The thing that everyone does when they get out of comas? Dick held his arms out like a zombie and pretended to look around blearily. Wah, where am I? Oh, that. Barbara sighed. No, I'm, I'm feeling okay. I guess I'm just hungry after being knocked out for, holy shit, Dick, did you say three days? Well, technically two and a half, but you got clocked at 11.59. Dick shrugged his shoulders. Perils of working the night shift. There was an awkward pause between the two crime fighters as Barbara leaned back contentedly in her hospital bed, Still holding up the slice of pizza that she'd stolen from Dick's box, she nibbled liberally at the ever-widening edge of her triangle of cheese and grease. You know, you got a face full of some of those chemicals back there. He led gently. You might want to take it a little slow for a while. Oh shit, am I two-faced? No, no, it's just... Nightwing sucked through his teeth. You know, in our line of work, chemicals very rarely mean anything good. I just wanted to make sure that you were, you know... Oh... I see what it is, Babs laughed. You just wanted to make sure that the playing field was still even, making sure that I don't have any superpowers or anything to give me an unfair advantage in our tally contest. They smiled back at one another. Yeah, that's right. 
He gave her a quick, mostly platonic peck on the cheek. Rest up, Babs. I'm gonna head back to the blood for a bit to nip this thing in the bud, Dick said, taking the exit handle in his hand. I told Alfred to keep your favorite room in the manor up and running in case you need a place to crash. Oof, don't tempt me, Barbara laughed. Wayne Manor is way more comfortable than Dad's sofa. Dick waved goodbye and left Barbara alone to recuperate. She nestled back into the position that she'd been laying in, her head pounding as the distinct smell of copper continued to waft from somewhere that she couldn't quite place. How am I already out of pizza? Barbara asked aloud with a disgruntled sigh. I wonder if the hospital food is any better here than it is at the Elliott Clinic. And so began the strange transformation of Barbara Gordon as the chemicals in her bloodstream began to get to work in earnest. In this day and age, the closest thing that a crime fighter got to a vacation was being benched for injury. Nights off were few and far between, but with a mentor like the Batman, the only surefire way to not catch flack for taking it easy was to have a broken bone in an essential extremity like your skull. Even with as many head injuries as she and the other Bat Babies had endured, though, everyone felt that it would be good for Barbara to get some rest. No one was questioning whether or not she deserved the time off. The truth was, everyone was so concerned about Barbara's linear fracture that they mostly forgot about being splashed with one of Langstrom's formulas. It didn't become apparent that something was actually wrong with Babs until a few weeks later. She came toddling back into her bedroom with her latest haul from her dad's fridge. Frozen stuff, bologna and mustard sandwiches, a couple of hot pockets that she'd cooked in the microwave. Suedo Ninja training came in handy when you wanted to reach the door before the timer beeped and woke up your overworked police commissioner father. Babs unfurled her arms and let it all spread out across the bed, revealing a thick fluffy muffin top rolling out from underneath her shirt and folding over the hem of her pajama pants. Her green eyes glimmered with greed, her fingers wriggling with delight as she struggled to decide what to eat first. Enjoying your nights off? Dick! Barbara turned belly first to face her bedroom window. Dick Grayson had returned in his black and blues, perched on the sill like when they were kids. His eyes widened beneath the mask as soon as his view of Barbara's behind became one of her front. The large, sloshing belly that domed out from her once-toned muscular waist had come out of nowhere. Just three weeks ago, Babs had been in fit and fighting shape, minus the concussion. But she may as well have been benched for months with how soft she was. Jesus, you really are enjoying your time off. Dick tread lightly, planting his feet in Barbara's room. This really seems like a call a scientist immediately situation. Can the Adam still come through phone lines? Because we seriously need him here. Like, now. Wow, okay, first time I see you in weeks and you call me fat. Barbara rolled her eyes, munching on one of the less molten Hot Pockets. Nice to see that you forgot to pack your charm for your trip back from the blood. Okay, yeah, but... Dick gestured vaguely to Barbara's overall. Girth. In a way that sold his frustration. How are you not freaked out by this? I would think that we've both seen stranger things than, well, this. Barbara hefted up her belly with both hands and let it fall back across her lap with slow, heavy sloshes. The reverberation carried through her thighs, billowing out her bottoms to drum-tight thinness. The more that Dick looked, the more apparent that the damage hadn't just been confined to Barbara's midsection. A soft double chin framed her face as she glowered at him, crossing thick arms across her chest. Yeah, but okay, this is still a pretty big deal. Look, I wanted to say something, but I mean, come on, it's embarrassing, you know. Barbara took a bite from her hot pocket. I figured, hey, I've worked with man bat serum before. I should be able to figure out whatever was in those chemicals that's got me eating like a... Pig? Barbara's expression tightened, her amber brow furrowing in consternation. Her chubby cheeks visibly reddened even in the dark. I should not have said that. Anyway? Batgirl veered. Yes, pig. That was my first thought, too. I figured that I'd be able to reverse this and melt off any pounds that I've picked up by punching a few extra bad guys. So have you made any progress? Barbara bit her bottom lip and looked off to the side. The truth of the matter was that despite her noble intentions... She'd been far too distracted recently by her new appetite. She'd sit down to work at her desk in her own makeshift bat cave before finding herself snacking on somethings. Then she'd get up to get a few more and then a little more. And then dad was always happy to have her home, so he made sure to order her favorites. Hiding this from him was getting tougher by the day, so that took a lot of doing. Oh, you haven't been able to make headway on this, have you? Not exactly, Barbara answered begrudgingly. But I'm starting to maybe... Look, the point of having a team is that you can rely on us. We're here to help you out. Dick said with a firm hand on Barbara's shoulder. We deal with a lot of weird stuff in our line of duty, and sometimes we get transformed. Do you remember that time Bruce became a zebra person? 
Babs laughed at the image of their normally stern and stoic mentor, clad in black and white stripes over his bat suit. He came to us and we helped him figure out how to turn him back to normal. Nightwing poked Barbara in her belly, losing about a third of his digit in the soft white fluff of his crime-fighting partner and not quite ex-girlfriend. She winced at the touch, which made him laugh. We can figure out how to fix you too. Thanks, Dick. Babs smiled, wrapping her arms around his shoulders. You're a great guy. No sweat. After all, this is way less weird than the zebra thing. Too often, plot threads in the lives of superheroes go unresolved. Being a reactionary bunch, those who put on capes and tights find themselves sort of drifting from one problem to the next. It is in their nature to happen upon more cases and problems than they can possibly solve in one lifetime. And ultimately, it was looking more and more that Bab's weight problem was going to be one of them. You know, this job would be a lot easier if I didn't have you chewing in my ear. You love it. Barbara's breasts puddled on the desk in front of her, spreading her thick arms wide across her chest as she typed diligently at the keyboard. One hand ventured away briefly to return with some salt and vinegar chips, reaching past her smothering heft of biceps to deliver a fistful of salt, calories, and grease. As the effects of Langstrom's pig serum reversed and fell to the wayside, it became more clear every day that Barbara was not suited for field duty anymore. They had attempted it for a while to disastrous results, her bringing snacks to stakeouts, getting winded, running after criminals, and literally busting out of her bat suit had put any thought of her resuming her life as Batgirl to bed. So instead, she picked up an old hat one that didn't require so much movement. Chubby digits danced across the keyboard in an old routine, barely hindered by their excess girth but leaving small traces of many snacks behind as Oracle kept up with Nightwing in her own way. Far too out of shape by now to even dream of being up there on the rooftops with him, Serving him as his eyes and ears until they got this whole thing figured out would be in everyone's best interest, especially mine. Barbara's stomach grumbled as it billowed out between her massive legs. It had started to roll over the seat of her chairs now, even squished between her fat thighs. No telling when she would need to upgrade to a wider rig, but judging by how quickly she'd been expanding, it was going to be soon. I'm sorry, nothing dick just thinking out loud, Barbara answered hotly. Um, just check the top floor. I'm going to run some numbers. Babs muted her comms as she scooted away from her many monitors, prying her stomach away from the desk for the first time in what felt like hours. In actuality, it had only been about 45 minutes since lunch. But to the expanded appetite of the Oracle, formerly known as Batgirl, that may as well have been all day. Bracing herself by grabbing the armrests to her poor, overworked chair, Barbara grumbled as she struggled to rise under her own power with such a huge stomach and wide behind pinning her down, not to mention just how soft she'd gotten laying around on non-active duty, getting up seemed to be getting harder to do every day. But I do have a figure to keep up, she mused aloud, and the perfect excuse to eat whatever I want. Barbara ran her hands adoringly along the profile of her prodigious belly as it sagged and sloshed into its proper place, resting heavily over her thighs. The great swell of fat gurgled accordingly, almost like a purr from a cat. Babs smiled eagerly as she caught her breath, chin tripling as she looked down, down over the vastness of her own form. The ravenous redhead began her slow plodding waddle towards the doorway that led out to the hall. Her new cover story as an overweight online gamer might have made her dad upset and worried, but it at least justified her screaming into her computer on nights when he was home. And again, this was only temporary, for sure, totally temporary. She knew that the longer she stayed like this, a slave to her stomach, the harder it would be for her to go back. But conversely, the longer that she stayed like this, the more she realized that maybe she didn't want to go back. Langstrom's serum hadn't started making her grow a tail or ears or anything, and her nose wasn't all upturned and pink. That would have been horrible, but this. She squeezed a handful of her squishy side fat, an electric tingle running up her sides. This she could live with. As the monitors danced with the scenes of Dick's HUD feeding her statistics and numbers, Barbara began to plot slowly out the door. Not even the sound of her own name was enough to rip her away from the siren's call of the kitchen that led her by the chins towards an even wider seat. Oracle? Coming, coming! Babs huffed and puffed as she waddled back to her desk, leaning over her chair. She was out of breath already. She might seriously need to rethink how badly she hated being stuck in a wheelchair if she kept eating like this. She'd passed 350 pounds last week, and with the accelerated growth rate that she'd been experiencing. Could she do this job from her bed? The thought should have scared her, but the idea of getting to lay around and eat all day. It didn't not sound appealing. She couldn't tell what the serum was playing with her mind anymore. But the rush of emotions that came with the thought of getting to do nothing but eat herself round all day was strong enough that she didn't necessarily care. 
I, I'm a, she faked static, breaking up ear me, I, and then she muted the comms again. Dick was a big boy, he could take care of himself, and it was getting a lot harder for her to do her job on an empty stomach. After all, she should be able to help out as much as she could, given the circumstances. Let's go fill you up, fat girl, she said with a greedy glee as she finally managed to squeeze her way out of her bedroom door, colossal cheeks smothering the small springy tail that had sprung up at the base of her spine. The End <laughs>